tree. Oh, I died. Ah. All right. So because it is uh, computer science week and this is a scratch game that you just watched me play, um, you can create your own. And I knew almost nothing about scratch when I started this. I was starting from scratch. Oh, horrible. But uh, in about 30 minutes, I had a functioning game after watching two tutorials and then just working through uh, my other coding abilities. So it really isn't that hard. So let's go ahead and jump right in right now. Okay, so I'm going to go to scratch.mit.edu. And don't worry, I'm going to put it all on the screen. I'm going to show you how to code it exactly. And then you can tweak it and do whatever you want. Um, maybe put this out to your students. That's what I'm doing tomorrow. So First of all, it's scratch.mit.edu, totally free. Create your own account. You're good to go. Um, now that I'm in, I'm going to go to my stuff. And I made a copy of the game so that I could go to the original and scale it back to show the kids tomorrow and then see what they come up with. Because I got some cool feedback from some middle schoolers that really helped me make the game better. Um, I guess it's not really better because I'm horrible at my own game. But here we go. So essentially, when you build a game in Scratch, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can build one where you constantly run like forever, like Mario Brothers, or one where you stay in bounds and things happen like Space Invaders, right? So that's kind of the idea I had with this game. So um, let me show you from the beginning. There is a stage. The stage is the area where your game is going to happen. And you can see this little box down here on the right. It has a backdrop in it. To get your backdrop, you just click right here and they have a whole library. Pick whatever you want, or if you go um, and I click that again, you can create one with a paint program. If you're good like that, you can just randomly generate one or you can upload one that you got from the interwebs. Pretty cool idea. Uh, if I click on the stage and it's highlighted in blue and I go over here to my code section, you can see what I'm doing. This is not really the way it's designed, but I am literally staging code to level up the class quickly and then ask them how I did it. What, you know, if they come up with a suggestion, I can drop it in quick and then give them maybe a cheat, which I don't normally like to do, but you can code things in the stage. So I'm going to go instead of code, I'm going to go to backdrops. You can see I have three backdrops, but I'm only showing one. If I build additional levels, uh, that's why they're there. I don't really need them right now. And then there's a sound in here that, okay, oh, cool. But if I wanted to add my background music, this is probably the place that would make sense to me. Um, but whatever you put the sound here um, is the same place you have to code that sound to start. And I learned that maybe the hard way. Anyway, you need a stage, okay? Figure out what you want, get it in there, and then you configure it up there. More on that later. Then you need sprites. Sprites are essentially actors or parts of the game that are movable codable. So I have Santa, right? So uh, I have a gift, I have a snowball, I have um, a Christmas tree, an arrow, and another gift. You essentially, for this first part, you just need one. So go down to your sprites and you're gonna search for whatever you want. Now, if I search for Santa, you're gonna notice he's not there. And um, so that's, it's not, Santa doesn't, okay, I won't go there, but, um, it's what I, what I did is I went and I found a Santa Sprite in somebody else's, um, oh, scratch program. And then I just exported it out, which you can do with mine. Um, or you can search or even buy or create your own sprites. You can do whatever you want. When you click on your Sprite, you're going to notice that I have a couple of sounds associated with Santa that I may want to code. This one's a little creepy. Um, play it <laughs> maybe that's evil santa uh th that i want to put in there and then there's the code for what santa's going to do so before i overwhelm you with this uh let me kind of move on and then we'll come back to this so again code costumes santa only has one but if i wanted to fill santa's suit with blue and maybe that's when evil Santa is out there, I don't know uh, what the, if that's a thing, um, then I could do that and just set it up as another costume over here. Um, and then let's see any the sounds are right there. So let's go back to the code. I'm going to zoom in just a touch. And I'm going to leave this up here 
and explain what Santa does by playing this version, which is an early version of the game. So all Santa does, oh, I do have my snowballs coated, is he's just meant to catch them. Do you notice they're all falling pretty slow? Um, I don't know if I have them coded here to speed up or not yet, but I can show you how to do that. So if you wanted to have a game where Santa, you know, catches, and that's how you get points, you notice there's no score, there's no lives, there is music in the background, I'm holding the button down, Santa moves kind of slow, I missed one, okay, um, and that tree hanging out at the top is just a glitchy thing that I didn't do. Okay, so I'm going to stop. It's cool, but it could be way better, right? Come on. So here's what happens. When you go over here to control, um, I'm sorry, events that uh, when the flag is clicked, that's essentially saying the game has started. What do we need to do? Well, what I'm doing is I'm calling up my backdrop, which is called winter, making sure I have the right one. But if I could, I would change it if I wanted to, to the other ones I have selected. And I've chosen to play a song. Now, originally when I did this, I just had the sound, uh, the sound playing and I didn't have it in a loop, but my game was so easy. I actually made it to the end of the song before it ended. And, uh, so I dropped it in a forever loop so it would just restart it. I thought that was appropriate. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to get Santa on screen and where we want him. If you grab Santa and you move him around, you notice down here at the bottom, you have his X and Y position. Well, that will actually help you learn how big your stage is and how far you want Santa to be able to move. So for me, um, if you look at this number right here, negative 145, it says when the flag is clicked, this is for Santa now because Santa's appearing up here and I have him clicked. Santa's going to go to a random spot between negative 150 and 170. That's X, that's left and right. But he's always going to be at negative 145. So how did I do that? You see it's green and it's sort of rounded edges. Well, green is the color of where I got the block from. And the rounded edges are, depends on where it will fit. So in this case, if I wanted to go to X, if I pull that out, I could actually send Santa to exactly the same spot. Watch. Okay, see that every time I click it, he stays right there. And that's 140 and negative 145. But be, by picking, really all I did is I moved Santa over and I said, all right, if I want Santa to appear, maybe... Oh, negative one. Uh, there's, where is he? 181 and negative 165. I could say I could put those numbers in here um, just by dragging them around to learn where I want them. But that's all that does. It throws Santa in a random spot every time. You don't have to do that. I just thought it was fun. And then there's a forever block. So basically the rest of the game, no matter what happens, do what's inside of this. And this is a conditional statement. It says if the left arrow key or the right arrow key is pressed. Do this. So basically you're telling your computer keyboard to listen for a right or a left arrow key. You can change those. There's a drop down there. All right. And if either one of those, anything happens, what you're going to do is um, you're going to do something. Okay. Wow. Really specific, Bri. But then you're going to throw another if statement in here. If it's the left arrow, then change X by negative 10. So move him left, negative 10. And then you need a little bit of wait time. Okay, a little bit of wait time means that um, it's not gonna, it's gonna give you time to get your hand off, right? Um, before it starts over again and repeats that cycle. So if I click this again and I, I can tap or I can hold it, but he always moves sort of mechanically, right? And then down below, all I did was duplicated that same code and I changed it to right arrow key. And instead of negative 10, it's positive 10. Jeez, we're learning coordinate systems, right? That's it. That's Santa. He's done. Okay. So at this point of the game, here's what you got. You have your uh, backdrop on your stage. You've initiated what happens when the game starts. And that is that Santa drops to the bottom and in a random spot and you can move him around. So let me show you that real quick. Here we go. Right. We can move Santa around. Um, but that's it. It's all that happens. So in the next video, we're going to see how do we get some presents for Santa to catch?